Frankfurt, Germany. The Antonov 225, the biggest aircraft the world has ever seen. This ex-Soviet super transporter is about to attempt something no aeroplane has ever done before. It plans to take on board the heaviest object ever to be carried by air and fly it 3,000 kilometers to Armenia. The gas generator and its base weigh 190 tons. It's an awesome aviation challenge. The aircraft is not capable to take such a concentrated load. This one bit of cargo is almost as heavy as the Statue of Liberty. Значит, такого груза еще самолет в воздух не поднимал, ни один самолет в мире. И никто не поднимет, кроме нас. 1910. The riggers have laid out two long loading ramps leading straight up into Antonov's colossal cargo deck. To protect the generator, the base is cushioned by high-density rubber dampers, but it's going to be a tight fit. Bauman has carried out extensive trials and computer simulations. But now, he's finally about to find out if his sums stack up. One false move, and they'll crush the ramps. Okay. It's down, all 190 tons resting on the ramps. A perfect drop. Absolutely satisfied. There were no cracks and no noises, nothing. So. Bauman's job is done. Technical director Victor Zarginai takes charge. Now they must winch the huge load up the ramps and into Antonov's cargo hold. The load approaches the cargo door. It's tight. The rubber dampers under the generator need to have compressed to the exact millimeter. Otherwise, the cargo won't fit. Victor Zarginai takes constant measurements. And now, he spotted a problem. It could be very bad news. The 190-ton load has been set down slightly off-center. The rubber has squeezed down as planned on one side, but not far enough on the other. One tiny error, but there is now a real danger this cargo won't fit into Antonov's gaping mouth. Session Mine, South Africa. One of the biggest iron ore mines in the world, with one of the biggest processing plants. Here, the ore is crushed and refined before being loaded onto one of the longest trains on Earth. The ore flows 24-7, 365 days a year. But covering the next batch of iron ore, 40,000 tons of worthless soil and rubble. If mine boss Len Ocamp can't shift it, the flow of iron will stop. He's relying on the behemoths the biggest trucks ever built. But one of these giants is wounded. Behemoth needs a tire change. If a wheel goes, you know, it's got a lot of implications. We're costing a lot of money. The only way we can make it up now is to get the truck as quick as possibly back into the mine. If Ocamp can't get the tire change fast, then he won't hit the deadline. No more iron ore, Sishin Mine will grind to a standstill. Can you give me a time frame, please? What do you think? Uh, three quarters of an hour. Then I can have it back into the mine. You can throw the tons in three quarters of an hour, sir. Behemoth's tire is four meters high, one meter wide, and weighs five tons. 
To change one, you need big tools. Problem one, how do you jack up a 260-ton truck? Answer, you get a 130-ton Liebherr crane. It takes a crane to jack up a Beermuth. OK, we need some action going here, eh? We have to attend to it ASAP. The 44 giant bolts on the wheel hub are removed using a pneumatic jackhammer. Problem two, lifting the wheel off. OK, turn the wheel, turn the wheel. Wrangling one of Beermuth's giant wheels is too much for mere mortals. Out here, they use a Komatsu WA600 fitted with a monster tire grabber. We're on the pressure the whole time, you know, so I'm on top of the people the whole time. Fitting a new tire on a car is tough enough. On a Beermuth, it's a nightmare. OK, OK, listen to your own, so I need this job done now. I need to start back in the mine. Finally, success. The tire change has cost Ocamp dear. He's now behind schedule. We've lost a lot of time. I need to start back in the mine. Now. now the Beermuths are working flat out, trying to make up for lost time. But there's a cloud on the horizon, a storm cloud. Rain is the Beermoth's Achilles heel. Rain turns Sishan's dirt roads into mud slicks. Beermoths slide around like drunken giants. Len Ocamp is about to miss his deadline. Antwerp, Belgium. Miguel van der Nijn's mission is to launch Goliath, a 2,400-ton ship, onto the ocean. To do it, he's brought in Sea Monster, the Rambis LR193 Sea Crane. The lift is due to start, but the rigging isn't right. By the time the crew have sorted out the thousands of meters of steel cables that attach Goliath to Sea Monster, it's 10.45 a.m. We have a, quite a lot of uh, time pressure, you see. Finally, they are ready to move Goliath to the edge of the dock. Slowly, Sea Monster takes the strain. Goliath's enormous weight puts incredible pressure on the cables. Each of the monster's two cranes has two 235 horsepower motors, each pulling a cable that runs through a series of 16 pulleys before lifting the hook. The multiple pulley system means that the engines only have to pull down with a force equivalent to 36 tons to lift the 2,400-ton ship. Crane operator and operations manager Dave Bax needs to make sure the slings stay perfectly vertical and the load perfectly level. Okay, stop now, Alex. Okay, Philip, 500 ton. As the monster takes ever more of the load, the crew push away the wooden blocks that have been under Goliath for weeks, leaving wheels and sea monster to support her. Now Wheels needs to start rolling towards the edge of the dock.
Max and the ground crew need to stay in constant communication. Wheels and Sea Monster need to work in perfect synchronicity. Too far, too far. Okay, so I think you're going to be on the wall. If they get this wrong, too much weight could be placed on the quayside and it will collapse. If it goes wrong, it goes terribly wrong. Frankfurt, Germany. The Antonov 225, the largest aircraft ever built. This supersized Ukrainian jet is limbering up for a world record shattering airlift. This is the ultimate in excess baggage. 190 tons of gas generator bound for Armenia. But the load is off center. The rubber dampers on one side have not squeezed down sufficiently. It's only a matter of one or two centimeters, but the load can't get through Antonov's mouth. This is fast becoming the removal job from hell. But technical director Viktor Zarzhinai has come too far to give up now. He gives the order to winch. He will try to force the giant load through Antonov's cargo door. The load slides slowly along the ramps. It's nearly touching the underside of the cockpit. It's still got to get through the door frame. It's skin tight, but it's in. Inside, there's more room. The next challenge is to plant the load in the right spot. To make sure the monster stays put, they take a no-nonsense approach. If this 190-ton chunk of cargo breaks loose during takeoff, it will fly right out of the back of the aircraft, pulling Antonov out of the sky. And now this enormous aerial stakhanovite can raise herself up to take on the air cargo world record. Up in the cockpit, the crew run through the flight plan. Destination, Yerevan, Armenia. The biggest aeroplane ever built, carrying the biggest ever load. To get off the ground, Antonov will need 3,000 meters of Frankfurt's super long runway. Now weighing almost 640 tons, as much as nine fully loaded Boeing 737s, Antonov goes for takeoff. She's up, but will she last the distance? Five ten a.m. Armenia. The heaviest aircraft in aviation history descends from the sky. Antonov was the center of the Soviet space program. Now she's a world-beating cargo carrier. A Cold War cast-off, now loved, admired, and in demand the world over, there is only one Antonov. In South Africa, Behemoth is trying to shift 40,000 tons of rubble in a matter of hours. Yeah, I'm on a lot of pressure at the moment. At the moment, it looks quite dicey. But rain spells danger for drivers of these giant trucks. The road is wet and uh, the truck is slippery all the time. In Belgium, Sea Monster wrestles with Goliath. You have to concentrate 100% on your maneuver like this. 
moving her slowly over the water. We are nearly there. We are nearly touching the water. Sishin, South Africa. Mine boss Len Ocamp is working under incredible pressure. He's got to get 40,000 tons of earth moved in just 10 hours. He's hauling 360 tons a time with the beer mutts, the biggest big daddy of the truck world. But it's raining at Sishin Mine. And rain spells danger because rain turns these roads into mud. I have to be more careful when it is raining, when I'm driving this truck, because uh, the road is wet and uh, the truck is slippery all the time. So I have to be focused. Stopping these juggernauts is tough at the best of times. When it's raining, it's even tougher. Beermouth has five brake calipers and 10 massive brake pads on each front wheel. If the driver applies them too fast, the entire machine could skid. In an effort to cope with the rain, the drivers use their engine brakes. The rear wheel motors can be used to slow down, hopefully without skidding. Even so, with 360 tons on its back, Beermuth's stopping distance is terrifyingly long. And yet, they must hit the deadline. When I go down, I must be slow. And the truck can be sloppy. The downpour is short-lived, but the damage is done. The wet roads have slowed the Beermuths to half speed. Despite the conditions, Ocamp is pushing his crew hard. He has minutes before thousands of workers turn up to process the iron ore. Yeah, I'm on a lot of pressure at the moment. At the moment, it looks quite dicey. He's not going to make his deadline. Ocamp makes a tough call. Although the Beermuths have not finished removing the topsoil, he's bringing in the smaller mine trucks to start collecting the uncovered iron ore. These Beermuth babies are still monster-sized. They can hold 170 tons each. But sharing the space with the Beermuths isn't easy, especially in these conditions. The mine roads are now crowded with metal giants. The drivers have to be careful. A collision could be fatal. Without that attention, it's going to, to, to cost you your life. As Beermuth moves the mountain of rubble, Junior starts shifting mountains of iron ore. Despite the blown tire and the heavy rain, within an hour, the Beermuths have cleared the rubble. And everyone is safe, thanks to the skill of Beermuth drivers. I love this truck very much. In the most difficult circumstances, the mighty Beermuths managed to shift 40,000 tons of dirt in 10 hours, proving that they are lords of the earth. Okay, everybody, we had a tough task ahead of us today. We all knew the target was high. We pulled through together as a shift. We made it at the end of the day. I'm very proud of you guys. Yes. Yes.